Okay. And now we go to uh, the fine folks at Spaceman 3 playing <laughs> with fire. Uh, this is one of those albums that I, I had limited to no idea it existed, right? I, yeah. I, the only time I ever see this album is when I read usually a deeper cut music list of the top albums of the 80s, mm -hmm. and it shows up on the list. Okay. And there's so much music in that that there's just certain things that you prioritize in listening, and it just wasn't one of the albums I ever came to. Mm -hmm. Now, with that being said, there's a lot of albums that fit that criteria that we've listened to in the 80s that I've Absolutely. listened to and loved. So that is not like a negative thing. It just sort of speaks to the fact that you're trying to juggle going backwards in time with your contemporary music and your recent past music. Yes. So that's sort of my relationship. You mentioned before that you did not have a relationship yeah, uh, with this it, band. It's really just the extent of you saying, oh, I saw this on a list. <laughs> like that's, That was it. Uh, yeah, you didn't even have like the drive-by knowledge of it. It's just right. sort of like, okay, I guess we're going to cover this. Um, Which isn't completely unusual. There's many bands that we've done, especially on Cold Listens, that I had never heard of before. Yeah, and it's uh, it's rare for me not to have heard of a band, yeah. but this is as close as this is as close as there is to a band that I had never heard of um, mm. heading into this. Uh, there there weren't many, but um, to give a little bit of a, a very quick bio. Um, they were formed in 1982 uh, in Rugby, Warwickshire, uh, in England. Um, uh, formed by uh, Peter Kember and Jason Pierce, uh, who were known at the time as Sonic Boom and J Spaceman, respectively. And that was the band. They had a debut album, Sound of Confusion, in 1986. And then they had an album, The Perfect Prescription, in 1987, before ending with, uh, or before, excuse me, moving on to uh, playing with Fire in 1989. And they uh, disband shortly after uh, the album recurring. As a matter of fact, the album is uh, released after they split in 1991. Yeah. So uh, it was four, and it was an acrimonious parting of ways. I've seen it described many times. Um, Unfortunately, um, interestingly enough, uh, Jason Pierce ends up uh, in his second band joining another band, uh, forming, I should say, another band that once again almost could fit the exact criteria of this band in terms of my knowledge of them, Spiritualized, <laughs> okay. who we will be covering in the 90s, but is another band that comes up often in lists of hmm. best albums of the, the 90s, and I just have not listened to them ever, so... Uh, Mr. Pierce, I'm uh, very uh, under aware of what's going on in your life, um, but it it does appear in terms of me looking at it that the heart of the band is those two members we mentioned before, mm -hmm. um, and it was sort of a slow build around the way the traditional you know do a, a demo tape gig extensively. Um, release a debut album after getting a contract on glass records and then pretty much through word of mouth. Um, is where they start to get big, especially in Europe, um, where they okay. are much bigger than they are on the American side of things. And um, they uh, they tour, and they're actually supported by My Bloody Valentine at one point, which kind of tracks. Yeah, in there, some ways. yeah, there's mm -hmm. some there's some overlap there. Well, anyway, enough about the bios. What'd you think of this one, Josh? Oh man, this was a this was a tough one. I gave it two listens you know to try and 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 dredge up some positive <laughs> feelings about it but um it's it's a if i had to describe it it's kind of an electronic psychedelic guitar um based um album drug album for sure yes. i'd say this one mm -hmm. yeah definitely um they maybe some somewhat uh Oh, well, as like every band, they're probably Velvet Underground inspired. I feel like, um, and I'm certain they were. Yeah, in <laughs> yeah. the wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. Yep, and they seem to like to, um, based on this album, they like to kind of uh, play around with space and like the spacemen they are, and play notes uh, consistently long. For long periods well, let me, of time <laughs> let me give you a little their influences their early influences right the the earlier ones are 
the Stones, the Velvet Underground, and the Stooges. Yep, and they Stooges, also yeah. they also mention that they uh, felt uh, connected to suicide, okay. um, not the act, the yep. band. Um, and he said sort of the maxim of the band, there are two maxims of the band. One was one chord best, two chords cool, three chords okay, <laughs> four chords average. And they also had the, the motto, taking drugs to make music. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kember did mention that he did cannabis, LSD, magic mushrooms, MDMA, that's Molly, I believe, right? Amphetamine and cocaine. And he's also a former heroin addict. So wow. he did he's cut all the, the drugs. Yes, he, he did every every genre. It's like go to the go to the restaurant and order the whole menu. So yep. that's a little bit of the, the influences and styles on both all music and Wikipedia that are referenced. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well the the one chord, two chord thing really um, does not work for me and that's kind of apparent throughout this entire album. They uh, play the notes in a way that um, kind of tries to put you in a trance i would say maybe intentionally um there's yeah, like that droney drone rock yes, sound it I is say, definitely yeah. drone rock um but in in comparison to some of the other acts that we've talked about that um kind of have droning in them this band has seemingly is like even more stripped down and they don't have there's very few um vocals that come into play there's um there's really little to no variation um within a song in terms of like what the what the um the melody is or what kind of the the construction of the song i wouldn't say that there's any sort of traditional structure there's not really choruses um it's really just kind of this um almost like <laughs> gregorian chant of a of a chord in some way that they are trying to like you said, maybe it works better on drugs and can take you to, um, you know, it, it almost is like music that you would, you could meditate to in some, um, respect. It's that kind of like, well, the um, drone singular, yeah. yeah, that you could, um, they do incorporate some organ, um, I think, um, or a keyboard that sounds like an organ, um, th throughout that, that, uh, works and i was i was kind of interested in this band in the first couple of tracks and honey and come down softly to my soul i had this interesting vibe and there was a calmness to it um but then like once it hit track three and kept going i just really i lost interest really quickly and kind of found it irritating that that there is a lot of build up to nothing um or, or not even really much build up at all to begin with um the Velvet Underground and Stooges um, influence is especially apparent in the song Revolution um, that I noted. Um, there's an underlying bass part on that that I thought was pretty good um, and enjoyed. But really, this is, you know, historically, this is always the toughest nut to crack for me. You know, if I don't like a band like Galaxy 500 that does this better and you know, kind of has more depth to it than I feel like this album does, then, um, you know, it's this isn't going to work for me. It's not dreamy um, if we're looking for counterpoints. You know, it's not it's not um, dream rock or um, kind of sp space rock or anything Shoe like that. Shoegaze or dream, yeah. yeah, dream pop, those genres. It, yeah. It's not really, it's not really those, that, that sound either. It's very stripped down. It's very simple. Um, it's not even... And not simple in a way like lo-fi kind of garage rock would be. It's just very um, uh, simple in a way that doesn't doesn't appeal to me. So un unfortunately, I can't recommend this album. Um, I did not get a lot a lot out of it. Um, they do have a track. You know, you mentioned the Suicide Band reference. Uh, they do have an eleven minute track on this called Suicide, which which is, is clearly inspired by right. that band. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's, yeah, clearly. Yeah. And I know, um, so yeah, I, I do not recommend this. Um, it was an uphill battle for me, but I know you like suicide a lot and I know you like a lot of, you know, we've had a whole decades long conversation about droning and shoegaze and feedback and, and, uh, although there's not really feedback on this album, so I can't really put no. that as a qualifier. Um, but how did you feel about Spaceman 3? 
Well, they, yeah, they, they could have used some feedback on this one because as much <laughs> as I like that genre, this is not my perfect manifestation of yeah. it. Um, it clearly seems to be... I, I'm not familiar enough with Spaceman 3 to know if it's truly their overall sound. I get the feeling it's a part of it, but this is the, the greatest extent to it. Uh, it seems to be designed to be as bare bones as possible. I mean, they are mm -hmm. oftentimes hanging on notes to the point of discomfort in yep. terms of where it's there. And you are not being assailed by lots of different layers or parts on this. Right. Um, I think this album is much better for those that like to project themselves into the music you know, mm -hmm. not in a negative way, but they, it's part of they can connect something yeah. to the space because you need to project something into the space. And one of the reasons I think it's kind of lends itself to drugs is especially psychedelics yeah. is because it's got that sound, but you sort of are, are already in that headspace. And then this gives you it's almost like the environment. It creates the landscape for you to project whatever you want onto it yeah um and that is where it's different than even things like suicide you know certainly different than like the shoegaze which it can drone at times but it drones in a very different way and there's even just the concept of feedback doesn't sound uniform all the time right. it goes up and down it can crack it can come in and out that alone makes it it different um as much as there's lyrics they're they're almost whispered at times mm -hmm. uh, it is interesting because most of the time it's i wouldn't call it a chilled vibe but it's sort of a a, a mellower vibe and then mm -hmm. but then there's a couple songs where it gets deeply chaotic but it's weird to describe anything as simple as this as being chaotic but that's where like the element that overlaps with noise rock does yep. come in a little bit because it's a relatively simple construction mixed with just you know ear bleedingly loud sounds kind of would be how i would describe it would you say that's somewhat accurate yeah. yeah yeah and it's not really i don't even find this album like abrasive in a way or like off-putting it's just really like simplistic and and right. um well it's even like when you see similar to they're mentioning yeah. galaxy 500 my bloody valentine the flaming lips sonic youth jesus and mary chain but they don't sound a whole lot like those bands no. to me like yes they have the elements of drone in some of those bands but i just feel like all of those bands while at times being able to be stripped down just have a whole lot of stuff yes yeah you, you yeah and you mention often how those bands when you put on headphones are kind of like comforting and you're like able yes. to kind of be uh like enveloped in the music and i i, I really don't you know, I thought about that while listening, and yeah, it didn't and happen. Did, here for me. did not happen. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, couldn't even, even like pre predict you feeling that way. Like I, e I didn't. There's yeah. not much, not enough here for that. Even a band like Team Impala, which shares commonalities with this band, there's mm -hmm. just and they can be pretty sparse. Uh, and and looking back earlier, like things like Pink Floyd and stuff, you know, utilized a fair amount of space. Some of the right. prog rock groups did too, but. Uh, they really they really are the uh, as close to the sparsest level of stuff while also being music as we know it right i'm not counting like things like the residence right which was kind of right. like a soundscape or the you know ambient stuff or mm -hmm. even some of the art rock bands we listen to um you know throbbing gristle and stuff like that um where uh, there's just different levels of you know what they're t wire right is another one mm -hmm. that on the album mm -hmm. we covered pink flag there were some that were very stripped down but this had sort of uh, a sprawl to it uh, along with the minimalist and i do feel i don't think they were trying to be confrontational but there were times where my ears heard it as confrontational um mm -hmm. where they would just stay on a, a note and they'd either pluck it a bunch of times or they would hold it for seemingly hold it and hold it and hold it and you're like okay what's coming next and it's like we're gonna give that note to you again this yeah. time you know <laughs> right. and it's sort of like that's an interesting choice and then you start to realize oh that's like the choice they're gonna keep making over and over again it's not like a choice for this song and so i felt like 
a lot of the stuff, if it was a song on an album, it would have worked. But when you extend it to the full album format, it just didn't work as much for me. Yep. So, yeah, I, I might have to give this one uh, a thumbs down. I, not might. I, I will give this one a thumbs down. It just it does not ascend to the heights that I'll, I mean, I've been pretty, <laughs> I mean, whether it be, you know, Sonic Youth, Yola Tango, My Bloody Valentine, Jesus and Mary Chain, I'm pretty yep. universally that I go from like to love yes. along there. But this mm-hmm. one, and even the stuff in the late 70s and early 80s, the stuff, the avant-garde stuff that you guys were really hating, um, I still found quite a lot to like about it. And I found it interesting. Um, this didn't move me and i listened to it multiple times i did headphones first time i listened to this was in a car which is not the right (laughs) spot to listen to this i quickly realized i stopped it i was like okay headphones and i was expecting okay it'll it'll unpeel another layer but it didn't and i'm like okay maybe if i play this loud in a quiet space right out loud Mm -hmm. maybe that will create the space like night you know and that yeah it didn't it just never i never found either the right frame of mind or setting for this to hit me so yeah yeah there's yep i agree there's no kind of like situation i would i would be able to imagine this being the right type of of music other than maybe being at like some sort of (laughs) retreat or meditation retreat or some sort of like uh soul expanding thing that you were doing doing ayahuasca with aaron Rodgers, maybe (laughs) might be the spot something like that out in the desert maybe i don't know but uh, yeah and i don't want to minimize it by calling it drug because i don't i think that can make it sound like there's not craft to it but like it this one stood out in in the realm of drug rock as being a particularly Mm -hmm. uh apt and as someone who who does not go down that lane it, it did feel like there was a barrier there and then when you read about it even uh, that was my impression before i did any homework right and then you read like how integral drugs were to the creation of the music and the processing of it you're like well yeah that's yep it's not exactly a mystery here so you then because they mention that it's such a part of it you it becomes even easier to process it within that context yeah but for any of our fans that do like this album i would be interested to to know what how you respond to it and and why it works for you especially maybe Absolutely. in comparison to some of those other bands that you name checked which i feel like are far more successful on on different levels um, you know to varying degrees for myself but like still i can see kind of i can separate their quality versus this in my mind yeah and the the closest i can think of is those bands we covered the avant-garde bands that were challenging you in the 70s and 80s but even those it's you love to draw comparisons but even those don't seem to be direct uh lineage so um yeah if you can find uh our archive or stuff that you listen to i would also be really interested to hear um for those that that really love this band is it the minimalism is it the is there an environment where this clicks is it the time and place um yeah let us know 